We'll take the same question for the brothers, okay? Because you, we will, many brothers, yani they, okay, is it even allowed to put pictures of Sheikh Haytham online and have this beautiful Sheikh in lectures? No, not allowed. No, not allowed? Because I think the, the Sheikh is too much fitna for the sisters. Yes. Yeah? I, I, maybe I'm fitting up for brothers and sisters. Yeah. I don't know what kind of community you live in, Shah. That's too much. Uh, <laughs> but it could be, subhanAllah, so nowadays, yes. these rainbow days. Yes. Yeah? Anyways, uh, but okay, to be more specific, we received some complaints from sisters, okay? Sheikh Muhammad Hijab, he wants to say. Yes, we received some, com before we go to that, we received some complaints from sisters, yeah, saying that brothers, are putting out images of themselves where they are displaying muscles, yani maybe just exactly covering the aura, and yani doing this stylish moves, you know? Stylish, it, mo it, stylish move like what? I'm not gonna do any moves, Chef. Oh. We can use that time for moves. Anyways, <laughs> is it allowed for brothers to put out images or videos of themselves displaying themselves in a way that might cause temptation to women that's the question if the brother is not yeah, any handsome like muhammad hijab then he can is that ironically or is it seriously not handsome come on it looks okay okay let's hear from the brothers okay let's hear from the brothers finally i mean <laughs> this is what kind of censorship is this? What kind of illiberal? Oh, Ibrahim, thing. Ibrahim. <laughs> Sheikh always take o takes over. Ibrahim. I was going to ask Sheikh, I wanted to ask some questions because to be honest with you, it seems like um, we're playing with like masalih, mafasid, sadda dharaya, all these uh, things, yeah? Like uh, all these usuri principles. Like this is what I feel. The, qu the first question that was asked can sisters approach brothers so that they can ask them questions about the deen? Yeah, that's the first question. You gave a very good answer, understood it. But then it was suggested that sisters should approach other sisters. But if sisters are not public online, how can they approach other sisters? Does that make sense? So yeah, if, if, if there isn't a, a female a point, alternative yeah. of the da'wah for a woman, then it it doesn't facilitate for a woman to go to another woman. So that what will happen is they'll end up going back to the men and that, that fitna will be there. So which is akhaf for rain? And which is the lesser of two evils from your perspective? And, um, and you know, another point I wanted to ask you as well is that nowadays, especially as we're going to be covering, especially with things like women's issues, women's issues that um, women are more, uh, I would say, they have more of an experience with, yani in, in life and things like that. Is there a benefit in females going public to elaborate a case? Don't you think there's a benefit that, for example, if they elaborate a case for their own um, gender, that it could be more powerful in terms of dawah and making a social case than if a man did it? Because I've noticed that when I, for example, go and do dawah, uh, especially talking about feminism and things like that, I get a backlash that, okay, well, we want to hear from females of your community. And so these are all things which uh, I wanted to ask you about because I thought maybe there's a balance we can strike. I don't know. Fahad is the big boss, so whether okay. he wants us to answer these questions. Now. You may answer those questions, but don't forget my question as well. Right, okay. Uh, quickly, first of all, regarding, we said there are a number of measures to be taken. So if sisters can go to sister, then yes. If she can't, then she goes to a brother. But it should be transparent, it should be short, it should be okay, public, it should be formal, etc. So we are not saying that you cannot talk to any sheikh or any da'ya about Islam. We didn't say that, okay? But we said it should be controlled. Now the other thing is for women to go to discuss certain things pertinent to women. It can be. It can be, but why a young sister is speaking about taqwa, yeah, on YouTube, and she's recording something about taqwa on YouTube. Are we lacking in talks about taqwa? Yeah? Other young sisters will not listen except to this sister, yeah? That, what you mentioned, is just yani, the generalization of those who want to justify for themselves why they are going public. And by the way, 
yeah? This is, and I'm sure, I don't know whether sisters yani, have reached to that level or not. I, we, it is a, a well-known principle, yeah? The female, yeah, does not like another female as her supervisor or as her manager, yeah? Because female to female, they feel jealous, yeah? That's why Allah Jalla wa'ala sent over 25,000 prophets, all of them were males, yeah? Why? Because Allah Jalla wa'ala knows that males appeal to females and males, yeah? Allah Jalla wa'ala didn't say, okay, let us half-half or 5,000 or 1,000 female prophets we send, yeah? And now those f feminists, they say, yeah, but there is Aisha and there is Khadija. Okay, there is Aisha and Khadija. But compared to what? 25,000, all of them were prophets. Yeah? Male prophets. This gives us an indication of the dynamic, the social dynamic of this life. Now, we cannot say that we have another social dynamic if that is the normal of humanity. The other thing. Now, regarding brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, look. Women are, okay, obliged to wear hijab in general, and whether they are obliged to f cover their faces or not, let us not get into this discussion. But definitely, the hijab women should observe is different from the hijab men should observe. We are observing hijab, yani part of our what clothes. But the hijab of women is more conservative, yes? Moreover, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was giving khutbah, women were looking at him, yes? He was teaching women, women were looking at him. The fitna, the dynamic of fitna between brothers, uh, males and females is different. The man, the male becomes uh, attached or his, the, the fitna of sisters or females for the male are quicker and by anything, by the way she looks, by the way she speaks, by her clothes, by her shoes, by maybe, uh, okay. But the fitna of men for females is not by their looks. It is very rare when a sister looks at a man and says, wow. Yeah? It can happen, but it is not the norm. Yeah? The fitna of men, okay, to women comes with a lot of interaction. Wow, this brother is really cool. This brother is really kind. This brother is this and that. And that comes from what? A lot of interaction. Not just by his face. Yeah? Okay? In fact, sometimes his face might put her off. Now, okay, I do agree. I do agree that for brothers, yani a brother, a da'ya, why he's putting his chest Okay, on uh, on Facebook or on his profile. Why? Yeah, this is a problem. Why he is putting himself in a very maybe feministic way? Yeah, or my, why he is putting whenever he has his hair cut, uh, he had his, uh, his hair cut. Yeah, he's putting a new image of his. Okay, look at me like this, like that. My this is my hairstyle. My that is problematic. Okay, although he is a male, that is problematic, and we say, no, don't do that, because that will create fitna for others. Yeah, for, for, for I mean, uh, for girls. Yes, inshallah, but we only have one minute until the Maghrib prayer, inshallah. I think um, when it comes to Islam, it does not detailly explain many things. What I mean by this is that there are general rules which have been laid down by our jurists and scholars, which fit for every time, which actually means that when this happens, this is a general formula. So there is a general formula here in Islam. Islam looks at the goal of the thing, which actually means, let us say now, uh, if I use a knife, if I use it for killing people, it's haram, but when I use it to cut the meat or the vegetables into pieces, it's halal. If I use the mirror to look at myself in it, it's halal. But if I use it to look at somebody else's private parties in the mirror, it's haram. If I use this money for sadaqah, for charity, for something to eat, it's halal. 
If I use it to, for, you know, for fornication, it is something haram. So Islam looks at the purpose of this usage. What are you using for? So there is no such thing as this is totally haram, this is totally halal, but it depends on how you use it. So now I think, you know, world has changed. So we have now, you know, there are many things new in our life and they're going to come other new things in the life. But Islam did not say to you, you're going to have like this type of, of computer, you're going to have like this type of social. But Islam has laid down the foundations from which we can, uh, you know, apply things into. This is what, what I mean by this. So it depends what this picture is for, what this video is for. It depends on the purpose of that to determine whether this is halal and this is haram. This according to the uh, juristic issue. Another thing, there is a qaida which says la ibrada bit la ibrata bit tawahum. We cannot raise suspicious things before the thing happens. So let let us look at it, into it, and see where it is up. And after that, we can pass a judgment, a verdict on it based on what we see. Uh, from this al qaeda wa bi al fatur brother fahad how's iman doing not good akhi it's not good <laughs> is it really that bad i'm really afraid it is is there anything we could do to save iman yes Iman is dying, but we can save Iman with your donation. Please watch until the end and give for the sake of Allah. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you up to 700 times in return and build for you a house in Jannah. I am Fahad Qureshi and I'm chairman of the Islamic network, IslamNet, one of the most influential Islamic organizations in my nation. I was born and raised in a European country called Norway. In search of a better life, my parents migrated to Norway in the 70s. What they didn't realize was that Iman may not be able to survive this journey. The population of Norway is around 5.3 million people, with Muslims making up 200,000 of that population. The number of Muslim names is increasing, but the number of Muslims with Iman is decreasing. In other words, Iman is dying in the hearts of our youth today. Islamnet has been, for the last 10 years, working non-stop and developing key da'wah projects to maintain the Muslim identity for our next generation. So we are making a change. I was a non-Muslim with no purpose in life, but Allah guided me and Islamnet gave me a platform to spread Islam in my country. Islamnet has given me an opportunity not only to learn Islam, but also to give da'wah and invite other children to Islam. I can't express how grateful I am for having Islamnet in my life. Through our projects, we are combating Islamophobia, inviting non-Muslims to Islam, giving tarbiyah to the youth, guiding non-practicing Muslims back to Allah, giving support to reverts, fighting extremism, and empowering the Muslim community to get involved in da'wah. We have been operating from a small office that no longer can cater for our needs. We need to establish a masjid with a da'wah and community center that can host Islamic events and exhibitions, have a youth center and offices where we can have full-time du'at, expanding the da'wah and tarbiyah programs so we can bring up a generation of youth aspiring to make the word of Allah the highest. Fahad, that is absolutely brilliant. We have to do this. Brothers and sisters, donate generously and help us to establish this masjid and da'wah center. And don't forget to make dua and share this video on all your social media platforms so everyone can benefit from this amazing project. We are not going to let Iman die. We are not going to let Iman die.